Welcome to Sacred Sessions, light-filled, uplifting and informative conversations for people on their spiritual path. Join me, Melissa Matthews. And me, Alison Filler here, each week as we openly share our personal experiences and wisdom on life, love and spirituality in the modern world. Welcome to Sacred Sessions, another fine episode with myself, Melissa Matthews and Alison Filler here. Say hello, hello. Alison. Everyone. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and we're talking in this episode about spring cleaning and energizing your mind, body, spirit. Perfect time of the year. Here in Australia, we've just started. Spring has sprung. And we can do all the things that we need to do, but we also want to bring in that new energy as well so yes we can clear out but let's ensure that you know what we've cleared out that we're making room and we're energizing and fertilizing as Alison said (laughs) and making the nutrients possible for a new start a new vision and just uh, stepping into the season with love for ourselves so how do you feel about that (laughs) Alison It sounds fabulous. I oh, have I already so. been loving this start of new the spring. I know here where we are in Sydney on the Central Coast, we had three days of rain, 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 rain. And then the first day of spring on Sunday, it was just like brilliant sunshine. And I just love it that, you know, you all that rain has to happen to actually... Um, make the plants grow on the you know throughout spring and it's the same with us too we need all that nourishing and nutrients as well and I know for me it's way easier for me to imagine myself the importance of it if I'm a tree or a plant than I it is if I think of being a human needing this stuff and we're going to talk about that um, in this episode and I'm going to share a little process that I do so we are. Yes. <laughs> we are. So some of you know that every now and again, I just go away and I, I just turn off all the phones and I do what I need to do to have a really good rest and to think about what it is, you know, like to actually, it's like an audit. I call it an audit. So I just go away and it's not like a hard and fast thing, but there's things that I do energetically. So within my meditation and a lot of clearing and a lot of self-realization and self-awareness, And I just look at my life and I look at, okay, how do I feel? Like, what is drawing me away from what I need to do? Like, what am I allowing myself to be drawn away to? Because, you know, it's always for me, I look at it as a two-way street. And so I go away and I think about that. I get a lot of sleep. I eat good food. I try not to be around anybody. So it works really, really well. (laughs) And you know, it's it's funny like what can come up and what you just think, you know what, that's time. Okay, that's time to do that. So I was saying to Alison, you know, for me, it becomes like quite easy, but some really good practical tips and something straight up that anybody can do. Number one, social media. Okay, you don't need to stop social media, but if you feel that it's, you know, there's certain things on there that just aren't suiting you, go to your about page on your social media and see what you're following and just go through and just think you know what is that really relevant is that still along the same lines am I still interested it doesn't mean that oh my goodness it's like you're throwing them away or anything like that it just means you know what that's just no longer suitable for me I was there and then it was good but now you know what it's not and sometimes you know that's the best thing do you how do you feel about that Alison do you Yeah, definitely. I know we were talking just before, it's about where is your energy leaking and draining into. And um, that's been, you know, something really important for me to look at constantly. Where is my energy leaking to? Where is my awareness, my consciousness, my thoughts, my time, my energy leaking to that maybe doesn't need to be? And yes, social media... And for yeah. me, emails, I've subscribed to so many things, <laughs> still getting, which I love, you know, but I'm, I don't read every, like, sometimes everything. Sometimes we outgrow like, them. Sometimes outgrow we've them. got That's what we right. needed because energetically that person has brought us what we needed at that time. And that is a great gift. But to continue 
but to continue the subscription for that is it's just another thing coming into the email box and so the best tip that I can offer with that one because I do love that practical thing is when we go into our um, email uh, folders and our inbox um, actually up the top it's um, you can tap on the thing which is by um, by the uh, sender and that puts it into an alphabetical order that then allows you to go through one by one and just say, you know what, I can unsubscribe for that. So you go in and you unsubscribe from it and then you just click delete or put them into the trash, which has got a 30 day thing and it's gone, but it's a really effective way. So if you were to sit down for maybe an hour or two and just go through even your email, your, your email and inbox, that just gets rid of so much. And it really is surprising. Like when you're sitting there and you do your emails, if like me, I do a couple of times a day. And what I find is, is that there's stuff that's coming in and I just think, gosh, you know, that's like out of 20 emails, there's six there that I need to un- unsubscribe to. And I just keep Obviously, on forgetting not and forgetting. Obviously, not mine or not yours, no, not yours. though. Like, no, no, God, no, You wouldn't want yours. to unsubscribe from <laughs> no, don't unsubscribe from mine. <laughs> Thank God, because I'm pretty slack there. But, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> but it's really surprising, like, even on that, that email thing as well, because, you know, now we're encouraged, you know, and it's a great way to follow people and to, to hear about new offers. But, you know, sometimes we just outgrow them. doesn't mean we don't... Yeah. Um, you know, we don't appreciate them for what we do, but we, we've got what we needed at that time. Yeah. You know, and, and that's, yeah, so that's a like a pretty good way. And, um, yeah, the social media, you know, like just going back to that, you know, even um, if you go on there and sometimes, you know, there's a there's great new features on social media now and I'll talk about um, one in particular. And so you can snooze somebody for 30 days. Oh, really? Which is great. Yeah, which is great, particularly <laughs> if you're coming up to an election and they're very passionate about one side. It's just like, oh, no, no, that's not, I just don't need to hear that. And so, yeah, you can just snooze them, and which means that you're still friends and you still follow. It will come back into that after 30 days, but it's actually a really good thing to do. Um, but, yeah, I do it around election time because I'm just like, oh, I just don't need can to we, hear I this. wish we could snooze people in real life sometimes for 30 days. <laughs> How good would that be? I know, I know, I know. And, you know, like, I just, sometimes I just think, oh, oh, I'm going to snooze myself. (laughs) I'm just like, oh, I'm going to snooze myself. Surely people need a snooze from me. It's like, (laughs) so. But that's why I like to, I I just get to the thing now, and I've really noticed it's every two and a half to three months where I've just, okay, and you've experienced it, Alison. I just said, no, I've got to take two weeks off. That's it. And it's just like, but what are we going to do? And it's like, Sorry, we, uh, we've I've really got to do this, and I just find it so beneficial just to be able to step back, and I still um, it it allows me to see like where I'm hyper focused. You know yourself, Alison. Other people would too. I'm like hyper focused, and sometimes I will just lose sight of everything else and just be focused on one or two things, and so it's a really good way for me to come back to like my family, my responsibilities as a mother, as a wife, and as a friend. You know, to really look at that, and also to my home. You know, and seeing like, well, I'm not going to go and do the ironing. Let, let's face it, I'm just not. <laughs> but, you know, if there's things that I'm missing out on and, yeah. and not doing and and fulfilling my role within the home, you know, that that is like this is prime time for me to see that and then just slowly go back into it, <laughs> slowly, slowly, slowly. So, but, um, yeah, have you got anything to add on that? Because I'm going to then talk about another surefire way that my husband alerted me to so that I could see where I'd been and what I'd been doing. So, but have you got anything to add to that before I get into that? No, I just think it's been, it's, it's lovely. Like if you're to, you know, spring clean your home, which is great. And I know it's not always easy, but to get your whole family involved in that, you know, I'm, I, I give my husband full credit for this. He's very good at motivating the family, motivating the girls and like, you know, getting, clearing stuff out, calling a council, clear out, doing the garden, just clearing out some drawers or, you know, clearing out their bedrooms, clearing out stuff. Handbags. Handbags, <laughs> files, filing, you know, just little things. If you can just do like little things, um, it's, it's just so amazing when you let go of the old, it creates mm. a new freedom for the new to come in. And look, I, I am... Well, I'm so grateful. I don't want to have to do all this by myself. <laughs> so I really love it if I can, you know, 
um, motivate my family or, you know, to get on board as well. And um, because they feel good too, they get a chance to learn what it feels like to clear things out. And, and it feels really good up. for everybody as well. Yeah. It does. You know, it does make such a big difference. And, you know, just even if, um, I think for me, the sometimes it's just even just clearing out the bathroom cabinet and the drawers, giving them a wipe out. There are so many products in there that, you know, we just accumulate and it's a, the most simple thing. So it can be as small as that, but it, that has a big difference. And it does, it does make a big difference there. The handbag receipts, seriously, just sit down and go through those receipts. Turf out the ones that you don't need and give the other ones to your accounting husband like I do. I don't know. <laughs> but, I, the, you know, there's things like that. that. There are things that I will then hand on. And so you, you were speaking about your husband, you know, doing that. There's things that I do really well. There's things that my husband does really well. And that is like to do with like um, money, accounting, numbers. Don't talk to me about numbers, I say. Just don't. <laughs> Just I'm going to give you this information here and you're going to fix that bit. But I'll do this bit here. So but he, he, he said to me once, he said, listen, he said, I know. I, the, the, best, the best way that I can tell you, if you really want to know where you've been, Melissa, he said, go and look through your bank statements because he said that always will tell you and that will always jog your memory. And when I started, I knew about it, but when I actually started looking at it and thinking, you know, okay, that's where I'm going, that's what I'm doing, that's what I'm subscribed to. And it really gave me a very clear cut way to look at where I was going because money is energy. And why is it energy? Well, it's currency here for earth, but also you have spent your time earning that money. That is why it is also considered energy and so if you look at money from that point of view then it makes it a lot easier to go through and have a look at that and just think you know what I'm actually doing really well or you know maybe I could improve there or you know what I'm, I'm just not going to do that anymore I'm going to unsubscribe to that so you know and that does make a big difference because it also it's a time to actually sit down and, and reflect and think you know what I actually have choice and the wonderful thing in my life is that I have choice and I have options and so I love to be able to exercise them in a healthy way and so that's going through those accounts and even emails and that it shows me that I've got choice and then I've got power and that's also part of that process of spring cleaning because it reminds me that it's actually within my own power to change things in my life absolutely just stepping into that power and being ruthless like if you've got a gym I'm membership ruthless. that you've been paying for that you never go either yeah. get yourself now's the time <laughs> to get back there or cancel it if you've got memberships to this or that and you've just let them lapse like just by doing cancelling or doing one or two things a day or a week is just going yeah. to just really um create some great energetic shifts for you it's liberating it's absolutely liberating. liberating i can tell you <laughs> it is it is and sometimes it's not easy you know but but you know what it it gets done like if it gets done and it feels like a weight from the shoulder sometimes but mm -hmm. you know yeah so that's what i love that's what i love about it. i thought that that was pretty good my husband to tell me about that like that was a few years ago it was a bit worrying at first i was a bit concerned at first but he's not <laughs> he's not the type he doesn't look through my accounts or anything he has access to it because he's very good at that and that's the only reason why so you know a lot of people think that it's not healthy but you know what i actually like it because he's very very good with money and he's very even framed and he's i'm quite fortunate i've he's never ever said to me don't spend or don't do this or don't do that so that's you know that's a good boundaries thing as well because he doesn't he's scared my mum says he's too scared <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> i'll tell you i'll tell you um one i i had i did a um i had an, a session with a client this week and money was one of the things that we were working on and it was very interesting like I find it very, I get shown, I find it very easy to see things more clearly when I um, get shown things from a different perspective. And so when I was working with this client, she was saying to me, how come every time I make some more money or I get some more money, something happens and I have a bill that just takes me back to the, the you know, that below zero or that, you know, with not much more in the bank anymore. Mm. So why does this keep happening? And so 
I, I asked her to visualize a ruler. So yes. just visualizing that zero was on a rule, like a 30 centimeter ruler. And then mm -hmm. there was also 30 centimeters going back minus zero. Yeah. And I asked her to visualize, you know, where on this ruler do you feel your set point is set at? And it's just amazing when you start to look at things from a, like in a different way. And she, she said the first number that came up was like minus five. So that's obvious that that's, that was a very important thing for, for us to look at and work at as where is her comfortability set point at is it's more below zero than above zero. So if, if you were to imagine where is where are you on that comfortability in your life with money or anything else and is it below or above then it's it's telling of why things just keep showing up in your life and playing over and over and over and not getting ahead so it's just amazing after doing a few processes and it's it's in it's interesting she won't mind me probably sharing this but one of the reasons why she keeps herself energetically below zero because if she goes above zero and starts to be earning more money, her parents are going to brag about her success again. And that's oh. going to upset her because they don't brag about her in any other way. They've only cared about superficial monetary things. And oh. it's just it was just so aha, aha, aha moment for her at why she energetically is keeping herself below zero. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. So by working through that pain and working through some forgiveness, after that I said, "If okay, look at the zero. No, ask yourself, where am I now on this ruler? And she was at an eight. That's so an That's eight good. above the zero. So by just affirming that every day, I got her to write down, she's going to affirm, yeah. I am now an eight above the zero. I am now an eight above the zero. It doesn't mean that she needs to know exactly what that equals in life, you know, what that's looking. No. But just by like, moving into that comfort zone changing that perspective changing that um the the thought process and that and that awareness too that's yeah. an unusual well, is it unusual is it unusual for parents only to speak about it like that or i mean that's a, a proud well thing, i but, think yeah i think some families experience that where you know people are, um you know you're really praised if you're you know yeah. successful in Seem business to be and successful everything else and yeah. yeah, and everything else doesn't seem to matter so much. It's a little bit more superficial. So um, just by looking at things from that different perspective and asking, okay, you know, it just can really help you understand where your blocks are or why it is that yeah. um, you're not getting ahead and things like that. And then you can spring clean it. You can clear out those spring clean and clear thoughts out. and beliefs that doesn't just have to be your bank account and your emails and but, you know, spring cleaning your thoughts and belief systems as well. You know, it makes a difference. Like when you become aware of things and you think, okay, all right, I'm aware of that. And I've been, say, you know, if they've been, been if you, so if you're doing the process, you know, at home and, and you're thinking about this and you go, okay, I'm aware of that now. Or even if you go to say Alison or someone else and you become aware of it and, and you're clearing it. The thing is, is that with awareness, you will remember it you'll remember it and yeah. you'll say actually no i'm i could go back into this position so i just need to remember and just to bring that back and that's a wonderful thing about you know self-realization and awareness and that's a great process Alice. it's it's like you talked about where's your energy leaking yeah. out into into ways that aren't yeah. serving you yeah you know that's a huge energy leakage yeah. you know resist not wanting something as simple as to hear your parents brag about you and she has her own business that she's trying to grow again she was you know yeah. did have a very successful business at one stage and now you know she's a, a mum and doing like other things but just shooting yourself in the foot I know, all the time it's like, <laughs> it's like oh wow what, like, why would you I think about when you, when you realize it you think oh my god it's actually uh yeah it's a belief do you know beliefs are funny things as well so you know like you want to really spring clean your life and you, and you think okay i can't be bothered to get up off the lounge <laughs> 
or you know what I want to go out and sit in the sun or something like that you know that's also a time to you 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 don't have to have anything there you're going to clean out just see what you know okay what are my belief systems and challenge them like you know okay where does that come from where does that thought that belief come from like did I grow up with that did I grow up around that is was that part of my culture do I actually believe that you know that's also part of decluttering spring cleaning and and you can you know you can spring clean at any time of the year but it's a wonderful thing to do and it's liberating because the more you the more you do it the more you realize like and can show up in the world as actually who you are it's an ongoing process it's not you know I've been asking my guides about enlightenment what is enlightenment I've been really pushing it with them and and you know wanting to understand that and in and so they, they've guided me to to read a few books and to to look at a, um you know to to look at a few things and to realize that it's actually it's an ongoing process it's an ongoing process throughout our human life just to do that to do that work to be aware to be auditing and just to be looking at our lives and how we can be the best version of ourselves that we can be at any point in time but just understanding that we're human we're here to be human and enjoy it enjoy everything that earth has to offer in a balanced and kind way so that was a big thing for me as well you know because I really wanted to understand what enlightenment is what I was being told that it was and what my guides were saying well actually why don't you go here because they they guide me they don't say this is it and I just believe them like they will just guide me so that I can make my own decision about it but I came to realize that uh, because I was thinking gosh you know this is getting a bit hard (laughs) it's like (laughs) am I supposed to be further along you know how competitive I am so you know that was a big thing you know going through that uh and understanding it so even it, it wasn't a belief system it was just something that I'd you know had come about and I was wondering what it was all about this enlightenment and yeah enlightenment is like um Jesus and their ascended masters or those that walk on earth like Yogananda and um Babaji and so I wanted to know more about them because there was more coming up lately in my own um channeling and and connection with their messages of course so I wanted to know more about that and why um and how that came to be and should I be looking at that myself so that was a big thing for my own belief system was just to clear that out unpack it and look at it from my own point of view and see where it fit into my life and to me it's just an ongoing thing and I thought oh thank god that's a relief because you know what that was just (laughs) it was a lot of pressure on me there so (laughs) yeah Yeah. I just I just love you know, you know, that word enlightenment and that word light. And, you know, with spring, we're now that we're in spring here in the Southern Hemisphere, it is such a beautiful time of new light. And, yeah. you know, to really look at where in your life you are being lighthearted, you know, energetically light, um, you know, the foods that you're eating. Like I just love, I just feel so much better when I have lighthearted thoughts and eating high vibrational light foods and drinking more water and, you know, those kind of things because we are a light body. And if we really want to, you know, heal any illnesses or diseases or, you know, anything, it's just bringing in that more lightness, wearing your light life do you need to be more light and um so for those of you at home she's actually directing that question to me i'm sure (laughs) but (laughs) oh well we can get so bogged like i know for me winter you know it's like oh i just want to like you know maybe indulge a little bit more in heavier foods and just those kind of things so i get it you know i don't it's a bit cold to eat all my smoothie bowls and like you know try and have all my you know those kind of things but um it's just a beautiful new energy to get out there and you know what i've been exercising again for the last three weeks i just want to share that um it's just been so talk about divine um inspired action um I just want to quickly share this like I used to be so fit like before 15 years ago I you know 20 years ago before my chronic fatigue you know exercising and being healthy was never my problem and then for the last 15 years I haven't really felt inspired to exercise 
And what I've realized is that that's not what I needed to learn to do. The last 15 years, I've needed to learn how to, um, you know, exercise other parts of me, not yeah. just my body. I've had to learn how to be still and meditate and work on my thoughts and ground myself and clear my energy and, and learn about the mind, body, spirit. And I was like, I received this message like a couple of weeks ago and I shared it in my um, newsletter, my emails to everybody. It was like, it's like, wow, I'm like finally given my body's like now is the time. And you know what? It's been so good because I've been starting to go for, you know, proper walks and jogs again. And I'm not feeling the fatigue. I'm not feeling the fuzzy head, which I could still sometimes feel. It's like... I've been like, okay, now is the time that you can get back to that because <laughs> you like learnt all the other things. So it was like, it. talk about uh, inspi divine inspiration, like that inspired action. Like I could push myself, but it yeah. just was hard. You've got to wait sometimes until you have that inspiration. Well, that's it. So if I think, I think myself, like when, when I became ill, I, um, with cancer, I knew that I had to stop. And so then after a period of time, like, and it took a long time because you do, you get used to it and you know that it's beneficial to stop and to rest and do as the best that you can. And obviously during that time, you know, like there was um, a lot of meditation, a lot, a lot of that, you know, which was beneficial, but then it is, okay, now it's time to, there does come a point where now it's actually time to, look at it from a different point of view and bring back in that exercise and how much exercise you know and and so it yeah, it's a, it can be a challenge and in what first. way you know in what way what is enough because we don't need to do more than enough we just need to do what we need to do and to ease ourselves in and if you think about it like you know if you've been unwell for a period of time it takes a little bit of time for your body to warm up not like you i'm sure you're going along that that um, the shoreline like Speedy Gonzales. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's like I my my guides told me, Alison, you only had limited time in your day to do stuff. Okay, mm. you know, with the responsibilities you have of being a mom and running a business and a wife and everything else, there was only a limited amount of time in your day to be working on you. So what you didn't the you have to use your time wisely and mm -hmm. you needed to use your time the limited time that you had in other ways for a while yeah. not just exercise and that was so um yeah just beautiful to hear it's like wow that is so true you know when you're yeah. looking at um your busy life and that i know many of us only have a limited amount of time you know, because they do have responsibilities and things like that. It's really important to really look at what is the top priority at the moment yeah. for me yeah. to be doing. Yeah. And it, for those who are exercising a lot and maybe maybe they're just, they do it every day or they're real gym junkies, which is oh, brilliant. God love them. <laughs> which is brilliant. But maybe they've been getting a little bit of divine intuition about doing something else for changing it up. Maybe yeah. doing some yoga or maybe just doing something else. And that's the thing. It's always listening into the intuitive whispers, your inner yeah. voice. What other things has, has your inner voice been guiding you to do for a while instead of, you know, weight classes or spin classes or, you know, all those other things. And again, it's all up to you to like listen yeah, to, to your inner voice. to explore it and to, yeah, and to find it. Sometimes you, you may not prefer... Or sometimes you you may never have any any experience with say uh, Pilates or yoga, and so you go along and you just think this is not for me. But there are other styles and methods, and they're wonderful for not only for um, what I found when I was doing either yoga or Pilates was that I was so focused on that movement and making sure that I was connecting um, in with this particular muscle group and and doing that work that. I couldn't think about anything else. So it is like a meditation. That was what I also loved about it. Um, you know, but it also helps to elong 
elongate the the muscles and to strengthen them in in such a way that it is and it's quite natural within the body so there are benefits to it but no matter what fitness level you're at to doing it so um but you know to explore it you know is really very very good to do that but yeah yeah good for you Alison and good for all you gym junkies out there (laughs) I love you all (laughs) no it's it's just it's just just active person (laughs) beautiful just to like have that awareness you know like you know, my daughters would say to me, you know, oh, come on, mom, come for a run with us. You know, you need to do some more exercise. You need to do. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know. But I knew when the time was right to do it, I would be guided to do it. Yeah. So if um, so, if you um, have been chronically unwell or you felt fatigued for some time, I recommend, you know, to go to the doctor and just see that everything's OK. Or if you just start it and you think, you know what, that. I shouldn't be as fatigued as this, then by all means go back and see them and uh, so that you can understand more about your body and, and about how it's functioning because it's your body. It's nobody else's body. It's like yours. So it's a good thing to remember to take control of that and to exercise your power of choice because it's wonderful and there are so many ways to 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 get in touch with your body physically as well and to balance it out with everything else that it needs. And so I... I... It's just, I love that you say that because if you're struggling to have energy, if you're feeling fatigued, Mm. go to the doctor, yes, and get those necessary tests, but use your inner wisdom. Where Mm. are you, where is your energy leaking to? Where is it draining out of? You know, where are you not shoring yourself up? And I wanted to kind of just share this little process that it's a I very do. Good process. <laughs> so, <laughs> which is so simple, but has been so helpful for me to help balance my energy. Do you want me to? Should we do it? Do I it now? reckon you should do it. Yeah, I think <laughs> you should do it. <laughs> All right. So it's it's just a simple process and visualization, which I share with you know many of my clients because it's helped me and of course it's about it being a tree so and it's a beautiful time of year to to share this with you so what I've been shown is if you were a tree I just want you to all just maybe take a minute to go within And I just want you to imagine if you were a tree or a plant, what would you look or feel like? And then I just want you to notice whatever you feel, sense or see. Just want you to imagine if you were a tree, what would you look like could be any kind of tree that shows up in your imagination or that you feel or sense or connect to maybe you're quite a small tree or plant maybe your tree looks quite withered or very bare and barren not many flowers or leaves grown on it So whatever you're connecting to, this imagery or feeling of a tree represents you at this moment in time. And now I just want you to imagine if you had roots growing out the bottom of your feet growing out the bottom of your tree how long or short would they look and feel and if they feel or look really short or sparse contracted I now just want you to imagine allowing them or commanding them to grow longer and deeper into the earth 
And just imagine, in order to be a healthy person blooming in this world, imagine being a tree that is able to grow and thrive and flourish and bloom. You need to have these long, deep roots supportive supportive root system into the earth just feeling your roots spreading out until you have this beautiful stable supportive root system beneath your feet and then of course all trees need to be able to absorb the nutrients from the earth. So I now just want you to imagine through your roots, you're now going to slowly start to absorb all the earth's vital nutrients, minerals, water, pure positive energy, now just flowing into your roots. And all you have to do is allow and receive. And this is switching you now into the receptive mode. Just imagining, seeing or feeling all these nutrients flowing into your roots and up into your feet. Just allowing that up into your legs. Imagine it grow, flowing up into your tree trunk or your legs all this tingly energy, all this pure positive energy is now flowing up into your feet. Maybe you feel this tingly energy flowing up into the balls of your feet, up your calves, just allowing and receiving, just allowing it to flow up your legs, into your hips, just breathing and receiving. Just flowing up your spine. And if it's easier to imagine flowing in up the trunk of a tree into your branches. Just breathing out any stagnant, toxic, negative energy as you're doing this and just allowing all this pure positive energy to flow up, up into your feet, up into your tree trunk. And just imagining seeing your tree slowly starting to be nourished and maybe starting to feel or see leaves starting to grow on your tree. Maybe there's some flowers starting to open and blossom and bloom. Just feeling your branches just spreading out, growing taller and just really starting to imagine yourself as a beautiful, tall, thriving, blooming tree with these long deep stable support system and just noticing how that makes your body feel now so that's just a really beautiful and simple procedure and imagery that i use can use at any time of the day, anywhere, just to imagine being a tree. And how nourished do you feel? Well, I, I, I felt a few. Um, I felt a few shifts. So I sort of, yeah. Sometimes I sort of, you know, I'll feel it like, you know, sort of move like move within the body and that but it's a very like it's a really good process you know particularly when you think about 
you know, just spreading the roots down and seeing them energetically go further and stabilizing into the, the earth and, you know, and to draw up the nutrients, you know, that's really, that really does help, you know, so. It, and mm. I love it too, because for those of us who don't like to be a burden on people, for those of us who don't like to, you know, lean on people, for those of us who don't like to, you know, receive just mm. doing that simple meditation has really helped me um, break codependency habits or feel like I don't need to, you know, that things don't come with strings attached to yeah. just be a tree. And then mm. imagine all your family or friends as well being their own individual trees or plants as well has mm. just really helped helped me get some, you know, feel grounded and, and um, centered, replenished. replenished. <laughs> yeah, very good. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that. And there is a longer version of that meditation on my website, thebloomcollective.co. So you're welcome to hop over there and down and subscribe, download that um, as well. Wonderful. So there you go. So we've, we've, you know, given some great ideas about, you know, just going through and having a look at who we are, how we're showing up. It can be done regularly. It can be done just every spring, however you feel like it. But there's a lot of techniques and things for you to think about and ways for you to, you know, engage with yourself and see where you're showing up in the world. And we want you to do it, it as beautifully as you can. <laughs> So there you are. All right. So until next week, I wish you well, Alison. You the yep. same. You wish everyone well. <laughs> and wish you well. That's right. And please remember, we um, we're getting lovely messages. We're getting lovely emails and texts. But we would really love it if on the um, if you're listening on podcast, please you know write a review. Alison we'd loves love reviews. that. Make sure you're subscribing. And I would love, you know, please write a review. It makes her heart sing when she sees, oh, that's so wonderful. It's like, <laughs> Me too. I like it too. I'm a fact. I appreciate girl. everybody <laughs> who's been like listening in and, and, and sending in messages and things like that. I just appreciate you all so much. Very much so. It's really lovely. Like it is just super duper lovely, and that's why in our last episode we actually went back and we did um, um, we edited down some things from episode one and two to make it into a shorter video, which was really good to do because it also you know it's a good reminder for us as well. Um, but you know, please by all means go and watch that. There's a great um, there's a great um, video or, or podcast episode. Um, I love the one on intuition. I love the one on boundaries. and um, But you know what? I love them all. So please, by all means, go share. Do what you need to do. But until next week, we wish you well. And thank you for joining us. Thanks, Mel. Okay. Bye now. Bye. 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 Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Sacred Sessions. Your comments, questions and topic suggestions are welcome. So connect with us on Facebook and Instagram and through our websites. Naturally, all links are in the show notes.